Hello and welcome to this video on setting up your measures graph in the AIM Ray Studio Analysis software. First, it's worth noting that it doesn't matter if you've downloaded your data using Ray Studio 2 on one of the older devices like an AIM Solo or an MXL Pista, or whether you've used Ray Studio 3 on some of the more modern Wi-Fi enabled devices. All of the analysis is done in the same software right now, and so you can access that in two ways. Uh, if you're in this uh, software here, you can access it via the analysis button here. If you're in Ray Studio 2, you can access it here. Or like I've done, you can put a direct link shortcut um, to the software which I've done here, and so we're going to load that up. But either way, this is the software that you need to analyze your data. Now the first thing is here, I've got two sessions uh, that are on the screen, both taken at Silver Sub National, and I've recorded uh, information as I've downloaded that data, and there will be links to videos that help you understand how to get your data off your device, um, where we've identified the test uh, date, um, the driver, uh, the track, the venue, the vehicle, uh, and the best lap. And so all of that information can be gathered so it's easy to sort through all of your data and understand uh, which session you want to have a look at. But what we're going to do today is set up the measures graph. So we're going to load up one of these tests and your view is going to look something like this. Now AIM has a default view um, for Race Studio uh, analysis um, and it looks something like this. But if it's not exactly like this, it doesn't matter because we're going to work through it till we get it to the point where we set it up how we want it. Worth just noting that uh, on the left hand side here you have your channels that are being recorded by your AIM device. Um, here we've got a simple list that are being captured by uh, an AIM Solo 2. Um, but if you had a more advanced logger that's capturing such as uh, information such as oil pressure or uh, engine temp, uh, brake position, uh, throttle position sensor, all of this information, you'll see more channels to analyze down here. But for today, uh, we're going to look at data that's coming in from uh, Solo. This is all the data that's represented here across the uh, graph. And then down at the bottom, you've got um, a test lap selection uh, capability that if you hover over it, you can see uh, the lap time and you can select that lap to view. Right now, we're looking at lap number 12. And the reason we're looking at lap number 12 is that AIM always defaults to the fastest lap in your session. But what we want to look at today is get the data into a format that we can use. Uh, and one of the areas that we've seen most people really uh, like when it comes to analyzing data is seeing a different graph for each of the different channels per lap. So we're going to start setting that up. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go across to the top right hand side and look at the views that are available for the graph. Right now, we've got the setup where there's one axis and all the information is on the graph at the same time, which can be a bit uh, confusing and just look like a page full of squiggly lines. And so what we're going to do here is go through what the options are. First, as you can see right now, everything's on the same graph. There is an option to uh, show the uh, graphs mixed where you can put different channels over the top of each other at different points. But that's more useful in an advanced sense, especially when you've got a lot of channels. So the button we're going to press today is going to be um, showing the graphs tiles. So this means that it puts the data on top of each other. So right now you can see that I've got two channels highlighted, GPS speed and longitudinal acceleration. And now I have a graph for each of those, GPS speed and GPS longitudinal acceleration. If I click on any of these on the left hand side, you can see that it adds yet another graph uh, and they're tiled on top of each other, which makes it easy to be able to see what's happening. And now we can get an understanding and start understanding the anatomy of the lap a little bit more. And so that's the first view set up. And I think it's really uh, interesting that now you have the option, if you just want to have a look at one lap, of changing colors of things. And so if, for example, you want longitudinal acceleration to be blue, I can click and change that here to blue and simulate any of the channels that we have. And if we wanted to have a look at the lap now, we can see that each of these particular peaks and troughs represents a particular point on the lap. And so here, um, and it also represents the fastest point at 120.7 miles an hour with this little uh, red triangle. We can see that uh, uh, that's the high point uh, in terms of speed as we come into turn one. And then as we break, we can see the GPS slowing down Interestingly, we can also use GPS longitudinal to mimic braking and accelerating uh, because of the uh, opportunity here to be able to say when the chart goes down, that's braking, and when it goes back up, that's accelerating. So again, nice to be able to see coming into turn one, braking, GPS longitudinal goes down, um, and uh, you can see that speed follows. 
So now all of a sudden we can start to see what's happening on track and we can start to see different inputs that are there. Um, so that's the first particular setup uh, that uh, is useful for people. The second thing we want to be able to start having a look at is the fact that most people like to be able to compare their labs and, and data is all about analysis and, and comparison and being able to spot trends. And so the next thing we want to be able to do is get an idea of the other labs that are available to us. And so you can see all the labs if you go to lap manager here uh, and you do have the option of being able to enable the laps and disable the laps depending on, on um, which ones you want to be able to view. But the easiest way of being able to look at your laps on the measures graph up here is to click on laps and now say, just as we said earlier, the one minute and 5.6 is the fastest lap. And so that's um, identified and, and highlighted right now. But if we wanted to find a similar lap, which we have here in lap eight, I can click there. And now all of a sudden I'm starting to see the laps uh, on top of each other. And now I can start looking at trending and I can start looking at data. But right now, I would say that this is still looking a little bit um, confusing. And I'd say that because right now there's lots of different colors that are associated for each of the laps and each of the channels in each of the laps that we've looked at. And so GPS speed here is represented by orange uh, for the faster of the two laps. And it's represented by green uh, in the slightly slower of the two, uh, 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 two laps. So you can see that here. Don't particularly like that view because it's all over the place. So the best button to tick as you want to be able to do lap versus lap comparison now is this per lap color. If I click here, now all of a sudden we're seeing each of the laps represented by the same color across each of the channels. So to sort of look at that in many respects, we're seeing for the um, one minute and five lap here, the GPS speed is represented by red and the slightly slower lap is represented by blue, but the same variables exist for the next chart down. The one minute five is still represented by red and so forth and so forth. So that's a way of being able to get the laps into a format that makes it easier to be able to start looking at comparison. The next thing you'll notice that out on the screen is that there's an, an extra graph that has appeared. Uh, and that is this time distance here. This is a wonderful chart in terms of being your starting origin to being able to identify why one lap might have been faster and slower than the other. So here, the fastest lap, which if we remember is the one minute five in this example, is represented in red as a solid line. And then the blue, which is the slightly slower lap, is represented as to whether it's faster or slower through that lap. Interestingly, um, this blue lap was slower through the first corner um, as, as went down um, uh, first corner being Cops at Silverstone National. And as you go down the straight thereafter, you can see that the blue lap lost a lot of time. And that's always represented the same way in the time distance, regardless of the laps you're comparing. In this instance, if the slower of the laps moves further away from the red line uh, on top, um, so above the red line, that's slower. And similarly down here, if the blue line is below the reference red line, that means the blue lap was actually slightly faster at that point on track as well. And so this allows you to start looking at a bit of analysis and we're going to go into some analysis uh, videos later on in the series. But you can actually see here that there is a very um, interesting correlation that if we look at this lap being slower and then we come up to the top and look at speed, well, that makes sense because you can see that the red lap is actually faster and you can see where the, where the cursor is pointed. Uh, the red lap is doing 90.8 and the blue lap is doing 87.9. And that speed is carried all the way down that straightaway. And you can see why that happened in terms of the time lost by the fact that the red um, line carried more speed. And then the next thing is, is to go in and have a look at as to why that was uh, and have a look at that particular information over time. And we'll look at that in terms of analysis. Last thing is how do we get this into a format that um, you know allows us to accommodate more screen space. I'm using a laptop right now for this demonstration with about a 13 and a half inch screen and some of the screen real estate I'm not using. So for example, down here, this is a great way of being able to select your laps if you want to be able to look at it. And the, the beauty of the AIM software is that it's up to the user as to what their particular preference is. But I don't use this bar at the bottom, so I will close that. And now that just gives me some more screen real estate to compare these two laps. And then finally, 
if the bar on the left hand side is taking a lot of, uh, of, of space as well, this measures bar, I can also just tap the space bar. And now that just gives me this entire screen of real estate to be able to have a look. And so um, this is a great way of being able to set up your measures graph to be able to understand how you want to be able to view your data. Um, it's not the only way to set up your measures graph, but oftentimes this is the best way to start the conversation and then to be able to advance your skills thereafter as to how it works for you. So that's it for this video. Please give it a thumbs up if you like the content. Also, please leave a comment below to let us know your thoughts. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the little bell icon to be notified of future videos. There's a lot more content to come. Thanks for watching.